Sweet Girl's the newest Netflix film starring Aquaman and Dora the Explorer. I can't wait to talk about it. Sweet Girl's the story, presumably written on a napkin at two in the morning at a cafe, about a man and a daughter who are grieving the loss of their loved one. Jason Momoa plays Ray Cooper, and he's out for justice after he finds out a pharmaceutical company stops the production of a possible treatment that can cure his wife's ailments. The first 10 or so minutes start fine enough, if not completely generic, as we watch Jason Momoa stretch out his acting chops a little bit as he has to break down crying in a hospital hallway after saying his final goodbyes to his wife. Things quickly go from plain Jane to dumb Dan, as Ray Cooper happens to see a CNN interview going on in real time that he calls into to bitch and threaten the person that's repping the company that pulled the drug that could have saved his wife's life. I don't think you can just straight up call into a CNN interview as it's going. Usually they have some sort of a background check. They kind of uh, make sure that these people are on the up and up. Sometimes they're scheduled far in advance, but we'll put that on the table. But what doesn't really pass the sniff test is he straight up threatens to kill the guy live on TV. I just don't think you can get away with that. But that's kind of the Cooper MO. This family gets away with everything. They, they steal cars, they steal clothes, they steal identities, and nothing really happens to them. They're able to pretty easily get from place to place without any sort of income. I didn't even know what the dude did for a living I mean, I still don't, actually. He's a boxer, I know, I think. We, we see him box a little bit. That's, I guess, the profession. The daughter, I think, is in college. She's 18 or so. But she has the brain capacity of a seven-year-old. She talks like a seven-year-old. She doesn't have any sort of the characteristics you'd see in a typical teenage girl. This is not the fault of the actors who are giving it their best. There's just nothing here to work with. It's also a red flag right out of the gates when the movie jumps to six different time periods. You have the foreshadow shot, then you jump like 10 years back in time, then you jump forward a few years, then you jump forward a few more years. It's just really sloppy storytelling. Ray Cooper's a boxer, yet he doesn't know how to throw a punch as he gets his ass kicked constantly in this film. There's a scene early on on a subway that's really frustrating where a reporter has some information for Ray about this big bad business and how he can take them down possibly, but suddenly a bad guy comes into the fray and there's an extended fight scene that feels like it goes on for a half hour even though it's probably only a few minutes. And it, I just don't get how a guy that's half the size of Jason Momoa can stay in the ring this long. Doesn't help that the choreography is pretty bad and the camera work is even worse. It's very amateurish, tons of shaky cam, a lot of those up close out of focus shots with the person in the background. It's okay sometimes to have a foreground flower or something kind of blowing in the wind and it's blurry, but the focus is on the, the background character. This is constantly happening in the movie. The relationship between Ray and Rachel is awful. They, there's no chemistry there. It's kind of explained why there isn't about, uh, I'd say 55, 60% of the way through the film when there's this little twist reveal. It's awful. The twist is just brutally bad. It's so dumb, subverting expectations, which is the new lazy trope that they're doing in Hollywood. And it makes no sense at all if you look back on the past things that took place and, and, and take it from a different point of view. Then you're like, oh, that's more dumb than it was before. This movie also operates under the logic that if bad guys are chasing a good guy, then they're always the first one through the door. There are multiple situations where Ray's on the run with his daughter and the bad guys are following them, but they're like not following them right now. They're just going to catch up to them at some point. So they'll stay at a hotel and they'll rig a door with a bell so that when a person walks through the door, they're like, oh, the bell has gone off. That means the bad guys are here. It's a hotel! It could be multiple different people that are staying there. It's not just a bad guy entrance. At another point, he does his best Kevin McAllister. He makes a little kill box. He closes a road by putting a sign in front of it so the bad guys are like, we have to go that way. This is done during the day and hours go by where apparently not a single other person drove on this road except for the bad guys. It's just so implausibly stupid. My all time favorite scene though is when Jason Momoa dresses up as one of the workers at a auction that's going on. It's a private auction. You would think that there'd be some sort of identification to get in, but no, he, he scoots through that front door pretty easily. 
uh, he puts on this outfit and gee, he doesn't look out of place at all, right? This just towering mountain of a man next to all these peasants walking through. But we, that, that's not my issue even. What happens is a, a brawl takes place right outside the doors of this auction with all these people and gunshots go off, there's yelling, there's tons of fighting. No one hears this. Not a peep. And he just walks right out, no problems. This whole movie is just a complete shit show. Music feels wildly out of place too. There's moments when the, the score is so epic and powerful, but it's just a chase scene. So it's like the guys are running and the music's in the background just And he's just like walking up the stairs and he puts on like a clip on thing with the ID badge and the music's like boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. So to summarize, it's a Netflix film. I just saw the poster for Knives Out 2 and then I saw Netflix at the bottom. That is very concerning because the first film's pretty damn good. That's troubling. So that's Sweet Hurl. Should you see it? Nah, the film's sour. Lately, I've been giving recommendations for better movies that are kind of in this genre. So I'll give you two right now. The Fugitive with Harrison Ford, much, much better movie, and Ransom with Mel Gibson. 90s films, pretty awesome. They're, they're a lot better than this. Hey, I'd like to know if you wasted your time watching Sweet Girl. Put it in the comments. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you next time. I can totally see why Chris Stuckman's not doing this shit anymore. Oh, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. If you like what I'm doing, maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a dollar tier, five dollar, ten dollar, just one dollar a month. Shows your appreciation and it helps me grow the channel. You can also join me right here on YouTube. It's kind of the same situation via the join button. You get access to an exclusive show as well. And I can guarantee you it's better than what Sweet Girl's offering.